can open the curtains now. That'll be all, Miss Edwards. Thank you. Liza, there's nothing wrong with you physically. But there must be something wrong. Why do I have this horrible depression, this panic if I'm all right? Why am I frightened all the time? You're an intelligent girl. What are you afraid of? I don't know. There's nothing to be afraid of. Nothing's changed, nothing's different. The nicest man in the world's in love with me. I'm doing the work I adore. The magazine's a huge success. Liza? Oh, don't, don't sympathize with me. You ought to give me a good boot. Maybe that's what I need. I'm going to send you to someone else. Miss Edwards, will you write down Dr. Brooks' address for Miss Elliot? Why? I'm a medical doctor. I can only try to cure physical ills. Are you trying to tell me in a nice way that I'm insane? My dear child, no. Dr. Brooks is a psychoanalyst. A psychoanalyst? I found him to be a sound, honest man. Oh, you're not serious. You don't really believe in that. We all have things in our lives that disturb us. Well, I can face those things myself. I don't need an analyst to tell me. You think you face them, but you don't. All of us hide things from ourselves. I believe that's what you've done. And that may be the root of your trouble. I've got to get to work, I'm late. Go on this way, there won't be any work. I've known you all your life. And the change in you frightens me. Liza, I want you to go to this man. Right away. I'll think about it. Give my love to Mrs. Carlton. What's that address, Miss Elliot? It's Dr. Alexander Brooks. Thank you. I do want a minute. I want you to hear this idea I have for the next issue. It's two sheets. It's called Why Not? Why Not? Why Not? Why Not? Let me have it. I'll read it. It's so chic. And don't bury it in the back with the underwear ad. Good morning, Mrs. Foster. Uh, Miss Elliot, Mr. Paxton wants to see you right away. It's very important. And these dresses are just coming from the shelf. See you right away. I'll take care of it later. Russell, do you want to see me? Liza, you've got to do something. What's the matter? I'm in a frenzy. Frenzy, frenzy. Either Johnson leaves this magazine or you get another boy to do your photographing. I mean it, I mean it. Now, I've put up with them in a perfectly saint-like fashion, and you know I have. But this is the end. The absolute end. Please, Russell, the printers are waiting for these pictures. Well, they'll have to wait. Do you know that Johnson took every one of our size 12 to 16 out last night? Two of them haven't shown up, and these two have bags under their eyes down to there. I thought you girls had more sense. I don't think I look so bad. Well, Mr. Paxton does, and he's the one who has to take the pictures. When I was your age, I knew if I wanted to earn my living, I had to study and work my head off. You girls are very lucky you were born with a job. Don't be foolish and toss it away. Please, Russell, you've got to do something. The printers are waiting for these pictures. Now go on like a good lad, please. Oh, really? I'm so bad I could spit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm sorry I was late, Maggie. Bad night? No. Not just some business. It's personal business. Why don't you quit? Go away and rest and relax. What's a silly fashion magazine compared to your health? Oh, don't talk nonsense. Well, why don't you? You don't owe any of us anything. 
Heaven knows Nesbitt's got his investment back years ago. If I didn't have this job, I'd really go crazy. What about you? Why don't you take a rest? I don't dare. If I relaxed just once, I'd never get back in this girdle. What's that for? To keep the doctor away? One of Johnson's jokes. An apple for the teacher. If he weren't the best advertising man in this business, I swear I'd... Maggie, you want a gooey kiss? Oh, why don't you stop trying to be a pixie all the time? Boss lady, you got a minute? I don't know what your intention is, Johnson, but if you're trying to disrupt this magazine, you're succeeding very well. You knew those girls had to be photographed early this morning, yet you deliberately kept them out all night. Understand what you do after office hours is no concern of mine. If you insist upon taking out size 12s, I wish you'd concentrate on Harper's Bazaar, the ladies' home journal. Oh, but you wouldn't want me to be disloyal to the home team now, would you? We'll not discuss it any further. Is that all? That's all. You know, you're losing your grip. When I was in the third grade, Miss Compton used to make the boys stand in the corner. By the way, you didn't happen to know Miss Compton, did you? If you have any business to talk over with me, I wish you'd come to the point. I'm very busy and I'm not in a joking mood. Boss lady, you kill me. It's just a matter of our next issue. I've got a honey of an idea for it. I want to make it a circus number. Cover, layout of the magazine, articles, everything. I know the advertisers will go for it in a big way. Our next issue is the Easter anniversary issue. We always use the same cover. Yeah, when the customers see it on the stand, they think they've read it before. Now look, I had the art department make me up a couple of copies. That'll be the cover. Isn't it swell, huh? You can carry the idea throughout the whole magazine. What do you say? Even if I should decide against the old cover, I'm not so sure the idea of a circus is right for a fashion magazine. Anything's right if it brings in the ads. I suppose I go downtown and stand out the stores and get their reaction. You'll do nothing without my okay. When do you suppose I might get that? We go to press in a week, if you remember. I'll think it over and let you know later. All right, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Hmm. Just like mine. We must go to the same tailor. Charlie, come in here. I want to speak to you. Tell him I'll call him right back, will you? Well, come on in. Shut the door. Well, Maggie, this is so sudden. Forget you're a male for a moment, will you? Sit down. Just what are you trying to do to Liza? Drive her crazy? Oh, she irritates me. You furnish your own share of irritation, my lad, like that apple this morning. Well, there isn't anything I do or say that makes her mad. She's just sore because I'm wise to her. Wise about what? Well, do you ever see one of these brick houses? And when you get close to it, the bricks are not really bricks at all. They're just painted on. And that big executive pose of hers is the same thing. And every time I see her, I just can't resist chipping little bits of it off to see what's underneath. Well, you can stop your chipping. It's no pose. There's nothing painted on. She's just what she seems. Don't tell me she wears that desk to bed. Listen, Charlie, you be decent to her, you hear? I'm worried about that girl. She's not well. She's working under a terrible strain. Well, she can always quit, you know. It's OK with me. I've had my eye on that desk of hers ever since I've been here. Charlie, you're a stinker. Well, I'm really thinking of her. She shouldn't try to be top man. She's not built for it. It's flying in the face of nature. Now, what she really needs is to go out some now, night. Never mind. Uh... I know your views. Yeah. But you love me, don't you? Go on. Get out of here. Good evening, Miss Elliot. Mr. Nesbitt's been here nearly an hour. Oh, sorry, sorry, darling. Hello, hello, darling. You know what time it is? It's quarter past seven. Oh, forgive me, dear. I just couldn't get away. 
It seems I've been late for everything all day. Did you fix yourself a drink? No, no, I was waiting for you. Hmm. What'd Dr. Carlton say? I'm through with Dr. Carlton as of today. Well, what's the matter? I thought you had such faith in him. Why are you quitting? It's the other way around. He's quitting me. Seems I'm a very disappointing case from a medical point of view. He says it's all in my mind. Huh. <laughs> well, what are you worrying about? Nothing. Nothing, why? You were humming. <laughs> does that mean I'm worrying just because I hum? Yes, it does when you hum that. That? Uh-huh. Didn't you know you, that you did that? No. Now you're really going to get me worried. Well, strange, isn't it, how little we know about ourselves? You know, I played a rotten game today. I blamed it on the caddy, on the clubs, on the state of the green, and it was really because someone in the locker room happened to mention my wife. I think by now that I'd have accepted that situation, wouldn't you? When I, when I think of the life that we might have. And, you know, I know that's the cause of all your trouble. Now, Kendall. Oh, I know, you won't admit it, but I think it's there just the same, worrying you. Excuse me, Mr. Nesbitt's car is waiting, Miss Elliott. All right, thank you. If I weren't so contemptibly selfish, I'd bow out of your life. Oh, now, don't say that. Don't say that. Yes, I mean it. I do. Now, what are you talking about? I don't know what I'd do without you. I'm perfectly happy, perfectly contented. Now, don't ever say that again. All right, I won't. <laughs> I still think I'm right. Good night, dear. Good night, Molly. Good night, Mr. Nesbitt. See you tomorrow. Miss Elliot, about dinner, what would you like? I have a nice chop. Oh, later, Martha, later. But don't you wait. You go ahead and have yours. That song. Da 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 dee dee dee. What is the rest of it? Da 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 dee da 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 dee dee dee. And tell him I'll do anything he says. Yes, sir. Suppose you tell me about yourself, Miss Elliot. I've turned to this in desperation, Dr. Brooks, because I've tried everything else. I've done everything I can to pull myself out, but it doesn't seem to work. Well, it's completely irrational. I've nothing to be afraid of, yet every time the telephone rings, I'm filled with fear. I wake in the morning with a feeling of terror. I go through the day with a kind of panic. When did this start? About six months ago. You've kept working? Yes, I've, well, I've clung desperately to my work to see me through the days. To sort of steady myself. And, well, now that's beginning to go. I've lost the power of making decisions. I hesitate over the simplest things. That's why I'm here. 
How long have you been with the magazine? Twelve years. I've been editor for ten. You started it? Kendall Nesbitt, the publisher, backed it for me. Oh, it's ridiculous for me to feel schoolgirlish about this. Mr. Nesbitt has been in love with me for a number of years. His wife refuses to give him a divorce. And how do you feel about that? I no longer think about it. I'm here because this seems to be the only way of treating this illness. Dr. Brooks, can you help me? No, I can only advise a trial analysis for a month, let us say. All right. We'll start next Tuesday. I think you should start immediately. Now? Yes. Oh, but I couldn't. We go to press day after tomorrow. I, I couldn't possibly spare the time. I've even had to steal this. Nevertheless, I think it's quite important that you begin now. Well, I'm sorry, Dr. Brooks. I can't. And I'm afraid you'll have to find someone else. But why? Why should this suddenly become so urgent? I happen to think it is. If you don't feel that you can trust me to know, then I think it wiser to go to someone else. I'm sorry, Miss Elliot. All right. Shall I start now? Yes. It's a simple procedure. Might even seem a little foolish to you. Just leave your things here, lie down on that couch, and speak any of the thoughts that come into your mind. Meanwhile, you'll get into your beard, I trust. What are you thinking, Miss Elliot? How curious. How very curious. Out of all of the millions of little pieces of which my life is made up, one silly little thing keeps going round and round in my mind. It was the first thought I had, and it keeps returning. What is it? A song. A little song I knew as a child. What are the words of the song? I don't even remember them. Or a word here and there. When did you think of it last? Last night. I knew I was coming here this morning, and the thought of it frightened me. The song kept running through my head over and over. At last, I fell asleep. But the song was in my dream, too. What was the dream? I seemed to be alone in space. It was vast and dim and a little frightening. I seemed to be searching for something. I wasn't sure what it was. The song was all around me. I tried to hear the words, but I couldn't. associate with blue? It's a color I dislike intensely. But I seem to adore it in the dream. I see. Go on. I whirled with delight, and suddenly I was clothed in the dress. Then I heard applause. I had just made a speech in a huge hall. It seemed I was the center of attraction. Thank you. Oh, how lovely to be me. If there's a party, I'm always the host of it. If there's a haunted house, I'm always the ghost of it. 
If I'm in town, I'm always the toast of it. Oh, how lovely to be you, oh, girl of the moment, with the smile of the day, and the charm of the week, and the grace of the month, and the... I bring a message for Miss Liza Elliott. From? The President of the United States. And? The President requests... Yes. That for national unity. Yes. For the furtherance of goodwill. Yes. And for the advancement of cultural and artistic achievements. Yes. Your portrait be painted and your likeness used on the new two cent stamp of the USA. Oh, how really lovely. Who is to paint me and where? I am to paint you and here. <laughs> Portrait is finished and the likeness is perfect. What's the matter, boss lady? Can't you take it? I sobbed and sobbed. And when I woke, I was crying and trembling. Does it strike you as significant that in your dream you were exactly the opposite of your realistic self? What do you mean? In reality, you're obviously a woman who cares little for feminine adornments. In fact, you go to the other extreme. Yet in your dream, you were a glamorous, seductive woman. You don't think I want to be like that? You dreamed it. Nobody else did. Fantastic as it may seem, it came from you. There are some dreams that are wish fulfillments. A child goes to bed hungry, he dreams that he eats a full meal. A man dying of thirst in the desert will dream that he's drinking his fill at a running brook. But if I wanted my fill of clothes and glamour, I could have it. I'm surrounded by it all day. I only have to stretch out my hand, haven't I? Unless there were something in the past, in your memory, blocking you. Have you never consciously wanted to be that glamorous, seductive woman? Never. Not even when you were 15, 16? The only thing I ever wanted was to make something of myself. Most girls of that age would think that love and marriage were enough of a career. Well, I didn't. And I despise girls who did. You seem very emphatic about that. Why? I don't know. Did anything happen at that time to make you unhappy? Try to think back. I don't remember. Don't you really remember? Or don't you want to? I don't know. Girls, he's here, he's here, he's here. Girl, he's Did you really see him? him? Did he just really look good looking off? Did he just look good looking off? Oh, Mama, that's all. He's here, Miss Elliot. He's here. Who? Randy Curtis. Who? The movie star. He's being photographed right now. Oh. Is everyone here for the staff meeting today? Oh, well, Miss Grant isn't it? And I'll call the rest of them later. Then could I please go watch? Mr. Paxton said I could. Watch what? Randy Curtis. Certainly not. Oh. Put that over there. The whole place is in an uproar. So I see. Put those in my office. Been to see the Wizard of Oz? Yo? Well, what did he say? Well, he said he thought he could help me. It'd be a slow process. Oh, sure. It couldn't be quick. Not a 20 bucks a throw. What's it like? What does he do? Well, he doesn't do anything. Well, isn't that nice? He doesn't do anything. What do you do? Just lie on a couch and talk, and he listens. It's really quite amazing. Amazing? I've been doing that fruity for years. He said something at the end that was rather curious. About you? He tried to make me think back, to remember. 
And when I couldn't, he asked me if it was because I didn't want to. It seems there are things in our minds that disturb us so much that we deliberately forget them. Liza, I know other people go in for this psyching business, but I wish you wouldn't. Digging down into yourself, bringing up things that'll scare the pants off you. Well, I've got to give it a fair try. I like Dr. Brooks. I came away feeling a little steadier. Well, I hope it works. Heaven knows I hope so. It would be awfully hard to convince me that the reason I don't like artichokes is because my mother buttoned me up wrong when I was two. Come in. Miss Foster Kidding, you said there was a staff meeting. This is the usual day for it, Johnson. Don't tell me expect to get any work done with that guy in the building. I don't see what difference it makes. We've had hundreds of celebrities down here to be photographed and it's never interfered before. Have you ever seen him? No. I thought not. Have you, Maggie? No, and I don't want to. I'm an older woman and I know now what gives me indigestion. Look, we have work to do and we're not going to spend the rest of the day discussing Randy Curtis. Five will get you ten. Darling, you're not going to have a staff meeting now with him here. Oh, my dear, I couldn't do it. I couldn't keep my mind on my work. Allison, please. Oh, it's no use, no use at all. Just the thought of him. Charlie, did you see him? A fleeting eyeball, not bad. Not bad? Why, he's the most beautiful hunk of man I've ever seen. And when he spoke to me... What? Darling, his voice went through me like the call of the wild. Allison, if you've quite finished, we have work to do. Maggie, about the cover... Maggie. Maggie. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. About the cover on the new issue. Girls! Girls! He's a dream boat, a dream honey boat. I've taken pictures of beautiful men before, but this one is the end, the absolute end. His face is so beautiful, it would melt in your mouth. Excuse me, I forgot something. I'll be back in a minute. Maggie. Maggie! Tell him, Allison, is he a creature from out of this world or not? He's from heaven. Russell, will you please come back here and sit down? We've been waiting for you. But, Ducky, I haven't shot his picture yet. His polo outfit just arrived. His polo outfit? Yes, and he's been waiting around for hours like a perfect angel. He's a dreamboat. Russell, come back here and... Oh, I'm sorry, Liza, but I've just got to see him in that. Allison! Allison! I'll be back in a minute. Oh, this is ridiculous. Well... Now that we're alone, how about the circus idea? Johnson, I, um... Well, I know no way of phrasing an apology for the inexcusable. For me to apologize to you now would serve no purpose except to give me some personal satisfaction. And I think my behavior yesterday was such that I'm not entitled to any. Well, uh, may I keep the paperweight? Or do you think you might want it to throw it to somebody else? Big stores are ready to splurge on the circus ads. I think we can make it a very interesting issue. We'll discuss that at the staff meeting. That is, if it ever meets. Miss Foster. Miss Foster. Hello? Oh, this is outrageous. You'd think they'd never seen a man before. You wait here. I'll be back. I know. You'll be back in a minute. Get these girls out of here before they tear them to bits. Oh, girls. Girls. Miss Foster. I have never seen such disgraceful conduct in my whole life. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now go on back to work. Really? I've never known such rude girls in all my life. I don't know what Mr. Curtis will think. Get it, dear. Even if you could have it, it's poison. But oh, what a lovely way to die. 
Mr. Curtis, I don't know how to apologize to you for this. It's quite all right. I'm kind of getting used to it. Uh, this is Miss Elliot, our editor. How do you do? I know you're crazy to get away, so I'll be quick. I just want to take your picture, just as you are. Yes, hot and must. Yes, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Your head just a wee bit that way. There, that's right. Now, don't move. Only be a minute. It's awfully nice of you to come and pose for us, Mr. Curtis. Not at all. You don't remember me, do you, Miss Elliot? We've met before. No, really. I'm awfully sorry. Where? When was it? Well, you sat next to each other at dinner about a year ago. A year ago? Yes. Uh, don't move, don't move, don't move. I'll be only second there. Hold it, hold it. Oh, this ought to be terrific! It was at Mrs. Brackett's. As a matter of fact, I took you home. We sat in the car talking. Now do you remember? Of course, of course. <laughs> How stupid. I have such a wretched memory. I, forgive me, I do that all the time. <laughs> it's all right. I was just wondering if we might have that drink we were going to have together. Well, I couldn't today. Maybe tomorrow. I'm leaving for the coast this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Curtis, may I have your autograph? Sure. <laughs> You're kidding. No, I collect autographs of all the movie stars. I put them in a big book and... On rainy days, I take them out and look at them. Now, really? Please? Okay. Stormy weather. Thanks. Mr. Curtis. Yes? Hollywood is calling you. Thank you. Uh, don't pay any attention to that one. He's just too, too funny for words. You can take your call in my little office right there. I can't tell you how swell it's been seeing you again. May I call you next time I'm in town? Please do. We might have dinner together. Fine. Well, that's a date. <laughs> oh, and uh, don't forget. I won't. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Dream love and put your arms around me. Sometimes you kill me, boss lady. Now look here, Johnson. I don't like you, and I never have. Your so-called charm eludes me, and I'm definitely repelled by what you consider amusing, such as this little incident with Mr. Curtis just now. My, my! You're here because you're excellent in your job, and I've never allowed my personal dislikes to interfere with the magazine. And in the future, I suggest that you confine your remarks to your work. And if you don't think you can do that, perhaps you can make more pleasant arrangements elsewhere. Well, well, well. Oh, Liza. Think you can spare me a minute alone? Well, of course. No, no. Not your office. It's not business. Come on out on the terrace. Hello, hello, Johnson. Hiya. Be careful. Teacher's mad. <laughs> Did you have any fun at the publisher's dinner last night? Well, I didn't go. Huh? I began thinking over our talk last night. Yeah, well, I made up my mind that things had to be settled one way or another. I want to see Catherine. We had a long talk. What do you think, Liza? She's agreed to give me a divorce at last. Oh? Yes. Yes, she's going to Mexico next week. We discussed the settlement in detail this morning. Oh, Catherine drives a hard bargain. She gets everything but the kitchen stove practically, but I don't mind. It's worth it. This is what we've always wanted, isn't it? What's the matter? Oh, Look. of course, of course, Kendall. Oh, what is the matter with me? Oh, Liza, for heaven's sake, will you get out of this office and go home? Why do you keep driving yourself when you know you're not well? Maggie can get out the magazine. You know very well she can. Kendall, it's much better for me here. Really, it is. Let me take you home now, will you? Kendall, please. I know what's best for me. Just let me alone. All right. Me. All right, dear. Miss Elliot, will you see Mr. Curtis? Mr. Curtis? Oh, yes, of course. Will you come out, Mr. Curtis? Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's quite all right. Randy Curtis, Kendall Nesbitt. How do you do? How do you do? I'm afraid I'm going to take you up on that dinner, Miss Elliot. That call from the coast means I'll be here a few days. Cigarette? Uh, no, thanks. So I, I wondered if we might have dinner tonight. Oh, tonight? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't tonight. Well... Well, tomorrow night? 
Tomorrow night, tomorrow night? Yes, that would be simply delightful. Would you, uh, would you mind calling for me here about 7.30? We go to press tomorrow, and uh, I'll be quite busy until late. I know, not at all. I'm glad you can make it. Oh, fine. Well, good night again. Good night. Oh, uh, goodbye, Mr. Oh. Uh, Nesbitt. Goodbye. <laughs> that was short and sweet, wasn't it? By the way, didn't I hear you say that you were dining with the Newtons tomorrow night? Oh, of course, of course, I'll do it. Well, I'll phone him and put him off. I merely said yes to get rid of him. You want me to go, too? Would you mind? Oh, no, of course not, dear. <laughs> I have an office full of people waiting. It's all right. Liza, this is great news, though, isn't it, huh? <laughs> yes, darling. Oh, you, look, you spare yourself a little now, won't you? Why don't you get rid of the people in your office and go home and, and get some rest, huh? I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. So chic. Ah, ha, <laughs> dance with me. Please dance with me. Now see. They follow me. No. Where did they go? Where did they go? I'll think of someone. I'll think of someone. Who could it be? Who could it be? Ha. Ah.
If there be any in this assembly who know why these two should not be joined in holy wedlock, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. This woman at the altar is not the true Liza Elliot. Tell them about yourself, Liza Elliot. Tell them the woman you really want to be, longing to be beautiful, yet rejecting beauty. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. This is no part of them. It's marriage plans. This woman knows she does not love this man. I do. I do. I do. I do. I walk with the shakes and I still got them. Had you ever been aware before this that you didn't want Mr. Nesbitt to get a divorce? No. And these men in your dream, they're the men you usually see every day? Yes, with the exception of Mr. Curtis. Oh, yes. And I think you told me that you had an engagement with him for tonight, didn't you? I intend to break it. Why? Well, I merely said yes to get rid of him. He walked in when Mr. Nesbitt was telling me about the divorce. And I wanted to get him out. Why do you intend to break the appointment? Because I can think of nothing I'd rather do less. Really? Why? It just doesn't interest me, that's all. There's a strange contradiction here, isn't there? Remember, in your dream, Mr. Curtis made love to you, held you in his arms. Yet here, you savagely reject him. That's a curious denial, isn't it? Yes, yes, but what of it? Now, bear with me a little further, Miss Elliot. It's important. Then, in your dream, you are suddenly a bride. But it's Kendall Nesbitt you find at the altar, not Randy Curtis. And the mocking voices of other women make the ceremony a nightmare. Turn it into a horror you cannot face. But why? Isn't it because your affection for Kendall Nesbitt is based on the fact that he resembles your father? That you have, in fact, transferred your love for your father to him? As long as he was married, married to a woman who wouldn't give him a divorce, you were safe. Safe from competition with other women. But the moment you were faced with becoming his... Well, that's horrible. That's not true. If it's not true, then why do you reject Randy Curtis? Because I've told you I'm not interested in Mr. Curtis. Most women would be very interested in Mr. Curtis. I am not most women. Do you mind? I can think of nothing I'd hate more than to have a lot of men chasing after me, making love to me. Oh, must this go on forever? Aren't you rejecting his invitation because you're afraid to compete with other women? Even the plain way you dress is a protective armor. With it, you're not forced to compete. You don't dare. I loathe fancy clothes. That is not true. Your dreams deny it. 
Those are dreams and your interpretation of them. I think we will find that those interpretations are true. We'll find nothing. I refuse to go on with this. You may send me a bill for whatever I owe you. Good day, Dr. Brooks. Good day, Miss Elliot. They say she hasn't been there today, Miss Grant. I've been trying her apartment. She hasn't been there either. Well, then try the cook door, the restaurant. And if she isn't there, try her house again. Darling, do I look too dreadful to bounce into 21? Oh, just the bar, I mean. I wouldn't dream of going upstairs this way. You look ducky. Where the devil is Liza? Oh, darling, she's been delayed somehow. Oh, Allison, for heaven's sake, don't be such a drip. Delayed? It's after 7 o'clock. She hasn't shown up all day. She hasn't even telephoned. Russell, take that silly-looking thing off your face. You're a great help. What do you want me to do? Weep quietly? Allison, is that you I smell? Do you like it, dear? It's that new perfume, Northwest Mountain. You'll get a horse with it, not a man. Oh. Oh, boss lady. Got a minute? Can it wait? Yes, but I'd like to get it settled. It's about the Easter cover. When must you know? Now. I've got all the big stores lined up to splurge on circus ads. I'll give you my answer as soon as I can. It's too bad you can't decide. I'd like to sense that and leave in a blaze of glory. Leave? Yes, this might be termed my resignation, boss lady. Please, no tears. Just a light kiss on the cheek, perhaps, and a quick goodbye, huh? You're certainly thin-skinned, aren't you? Me? You mean you think I'm tossing in the towel because you spanked me yesterday? No. I just got a better offer, that's all. Where? Town and country. I'll meet it. Afraid you couldn't. I'll be the judge of that. But why? I annoy the pants off you, don't I? It has nothing to do with the way you do your job, Johnson. I'll meet their figure. Does that settle it? Look, it isn't a question of salary. I'm taking less. But I can get something there I could never get here. Your job. I'm afraid that's what I want. Well, it's very nice of you to be so frank. Yeah, I'm ambitious. I'm an eager lad, full of dreams. You'd never suspect it, would you? That I want to run the whole thing myself. And there isn't a chance of that over here. You married that desk of yours years ago, boss lady, and you're never going to get a divorce. I know your kind. You have magazines instead of babies. Why, you insolent pup. I know your kind, too, Johnson. And I'm sick and tired of that incredible sideshow you put on under the guise of the gay young man with the wicked tongue. It doesn't always excuse your being an ill-mannered boor. And I question whether that isn't the extent of your talent. Rage is a pretty good substitute for sex, isn't it? Johnson, get out! Well, don't think it hasn't all been charming. If we need a good man over there, I'll make you an offer. We've been frantic. Shut up, Allison. I know. I'm sorry. Look, we're going to have to work late. Russell, talk to Adams and see if he can hold the men at the shop. Allison, call Bergdorf and see if they'll hold over until the next issue and promise them anything. Maggie, I want to see you for a minute. Would you wait? And darling, you look liverish. You ought oh, Allison, to take it. Stop. A... It's not very chic, move, but wait. Move, 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 move. Everything under control. Like a runaway train. Maggie, Catherine's going to give Kendall a divorce. Oh. I thought that's what you wanted, Liza. So did I. But I went all to pieces when he told me. Don't ask me why. Oh, I've been walking and walking and walking all day long. I can't think, Maggie. I can't think. I've had to stop the analysis. I couldn't stand that anymore. I just couldn't. I don't know what to say, Liza. Oh, I know. Oh, what's happened to me, Maggie? What is this thing? Mr. Nesbitt's here, Miss Elliot. Oh, well, send him in. Don't you want to put him off? No. 
facing him can't be any worse than this. Well, I'll get things going. Now, don't worry about the magazine. We'll get it out. Just try to decide about the Easter cover, will you? All right, all right. Thanks, Maggie. Hello, Kendall. Hello. Hello, Maggie. Liza, what happened? Oh, I don't know. I just had the impulse to run away, that's all. I'm sorry I made a fool of myself. Be completely honest with me, will you, Liza? Yes. You weren't last night, you know. I know. You don't want to marry me, is that right? Oh, don't, don't be polite. Is that true? Is there someone else? No, Kendall. Well, well, what's my position then? I've just rearranged my life to give you what I've always thought you wanted. Oh, I don't know why I don't want it now. That's not enough, Liza. You're far too fair a person to think it is. Well, I can't explain it to you. How can I make clear to you what I don't understand myself? I've tried to straighten this thing out in my mind. Kendall, you've got to believe that I have, but I just can't. Oh, I'm sick. I'm ill, Kendall. Liza, I'm not going to let you off this easy. I know you're ill, but you'll be well again. Other people go through these things, too. Meanwhile, you haven't the right to trifle with other people's lives. Even with this as an excuse, now, I won't let you. All right, what am I going to do? Liza, look, I want you to go through with this. Oh, now, this, this confusion, it'll pass. I know it will. Stop acting like a child. It's about time you stopped. Don't talk to me like that. I won't take it. Not from you or from anyone. I'm fighting as hard as I know how. Liza, listen to me. I can't stand aside while you proceed to destroy something very important to me. Give me time, Kendall. No. No, that's not facing it honestly. And you've got to for both of us. All right, all right. Come back for me in a little while. I'll get through as soon as I can. But don't push me into a corner, Kendall. It's no use. I'm going to fight, Liza. I can't help that. It's round 11. All right. Yes? Mr. Curtis is here. Mr. Curtis? Why, yes, you have a dinner engagement with him, haven't you? That's what he said. Oh, yes, yes, of course. All right, Miss Foster, will you please ask him to come in? Will you come in, Mr. Curtis? Thank you. Good evening. Oh, uh, am I too early? Oh, no. I'm awfully sorry. No, you didn't forget about me again, did you? No, no, of course not. It's just that I've been, uh, well, I've been working late and... and I haven't had a chance to change. Say, so, you know what? I wish you wouldn't go home and dress. Let's go out just as you are. I'll stop back at the hotel and change. It won't take me for five minutes. Let's do that, huh? All right. Oh, I was so afraid I was going to run into a glamour girl tonight instead of... Instead of what? You, as you are now. That's what I like so much about you, Miss Elliot. Just this. You don't know what a relief it is. <laughs> I'm kind of fed up on glamour girls. Thank you. But I am going to dress, Mr. Curtis. It'll take me only a few moments. Would you mind waiting outside for me, please? Oh, why, sure. If you'd rather. I'll wait. Maggie. Are these the things from Hollywood? Yes. There's another one. They look small for our models. They've all gone anyway, I'm afraid. Maybe you'd better look them over in the morning. No, I'm going to model one myself. Eliza, for heaven's sake, what are you doing? Are you all right? Here, let me have this. Come on, Maggie, get me out of this, will you? Like a good girl. Eliza Elliot! That's what I like about you, Miss Elliot. I was so afraid I was going to run into a glamour girl tonight instead of you. You as you are. 
Oh, Liza, what are you talking about? What does this mean? I'm going out, Maggie. I'm going to spend the evening with Mr. Curtis. You can get the magazine to press. I'm going out. I am ready, Mr. Curtis. <laughs> I've got the darlingest idea. I want a Von Witt Teller dummy, male, to fall in love with a sax dummy, female. And they carry out the love affair between the two windows. Isn't it too chic? Guess who just walked in with Randy Curtis? Don't tell me. Let me guess. 20 questions. Uh, short? No. Brunette? No. Uh, Marlene Dietrich? Oh, no. Hedy Lamar? No. Uh, uh, Dorothy Lamour? No. Uh, Loretta Young? No. Lies. Darling, you look divine. Oh, where'd you get it? Uh, Jack said, guess who just came in here with Randy Curtis? My dear, I wouldn't have guessed you in a thousand years. Mr. Curtis, you were such a dreamboat yesterday in that crowd of perfectly appalling women. So patient. Oh, do you know these people? Excuse me. Elise Barr. Miss Barr. How do you do? I practically never go to films, Mr. Curtis, but if you're a sample what's in them, I'll mend my way. <laughs> Don't be silly, dear. Do you think God made more than one of these? Lily Shaw. She's know. perfectly unscrupulous, Randy. Watch out. I imagine Mr. Curtis would rather arrive at his own decision, Allison. <laughs> Randy, our table is ready. Oh, excuse me? Oh, isn't he simply the most thrilling thing you've ever seen? Oh, my dear, you should have been at the studio yesterday. The women would start raving mad about it. Is there something special I can get for you, Mr. Curtis? Oh, we've eaten our way all over town, I don't think so. Perhaps a liquor? Mm, creme de menthe. Creme de menthe and brandy. Surely. Would you mind, Mr. Curtis? Would you mind? Thank you. A little closer, please. Thank you. Mr. Curtis, yes? I have a party from Boise, Idaho. Would you please? Surely. Does this go on all the time? <laughs> I have to laugh. Three years ago, I was flat broke walking Broadway trying to get a job. Now look at me. In with all the big shots. Writers ask me to please read their books. Businessmen ask me about the market. I go down to Washington. Here you are. Thank you very much, sir. And I even got a chance to meet you. Now you know there's something screwy somewhere. You're very endearing, Randy. Listen. Don't mind my asking this, will you? But, but it isn't just this, my being in the movies that made you come tonight, is it? No, Randy. I wouldn't want it to be just that with us. Well, it isn't. Swell. I... I really came to prove something to myself. Do I figure in that something? Yes. There's something I want to say to you. I know you've only known me a couple of days, but the way I feel, it doesn't take any time to know that a person is the only person you want to be with. And, and from the first, a year ago, well, that time, I, well, oh, I'm crazy about you. Randy, I'm not very good at this sort of thing. Don't say anything now. I, I don't want you to. I know you couldn't feel the way I do, not yet. But do you think you could think about it? I think so. Randy, darling. Hello. When are you going back to the coast? Tomorrow. Uh, uh, this is... Hello, but darling, that's so wonderful. So am I. We'll have a million laughs. <laughs> oh, you know Charlie Johnson, don't you? Darling, I saw Marie yesterday, and is she burned? She says you deliberately gave her the air. <laughs> <laughs> you look wonderful. You actually look like a woman. Darling, you know she's mad about you. You really shouldn't be so mean. Of course, you know everyone's crazy about this one. I'm mad about him myself, but he won't give me a tumble. <laughs> but just wait till I get you alone on that train. I know you don't like me because I want your job. You don't like her because she wants your man. Randy, what time is it? Why, uh, it's early. It's only 11.30. 11.30, uh, I really must go. I have work to do. Really? 
Couldn't you forget that work? I've already forgotten it for four hours. Four hours. Come on, let's dance. No, I, I mustn't. I really must go home. What's the matter, boss lady? Can't you take it? What is it? Are you all right? No, it's nothing, really. I'm just tired. You don't mind, do you? Oh, of course not. Uh, Captain? Yes, Mr. Curtis. Here. Yes. And gentlemen, I take pride in introducing the greatest show on earth. Liza Elliott's gargantuan three ring circus, featuring for the first time the captivating and tantalizing Liza Elliott, the woman who cannot make up her mind. The power of Charges against Liza Elliot. What is all this? The charges against me for what? What is all this? Whereas, Whereas. Liza Elliot cannot make up her mind about the Easter cover of the circus cover. Secundus. Secundus. Liza Elliot cannot make up her mind whether she is marrying Kendall Nesbitt or not. Moreover. Moreover. 
Liza Elliot cannot make up her mind as to the kind of woman she wants to be, the executive or the enchantress. And in as much as... In a world where tumult and turmoil reign, these indecisions of Liza Elliot can only add to the confusions of an already as indicated confused world. <gasps> Therefore, be it resolved... Be it resolved... That Liza Elliot be brought to trial and be made to make up her mind. <laughs> The attorney for prosecution can't be bought a soul For the gem she's in there's no solution once the story is told Introducing that thrilling writer and attorney for the defense Randy Curtis For the defendant can't be sold or bought. Miss Elliot's star is in the ascendant. This will come to naught. Your Honor, Judge Jackass. I should like to call that peerless witness, Kendall Nesbitt. Mr. Nesbitt, you are divorcing your wife so you can be free to marry the defendant. Isn't that so? Yes, sir. And you were led to believe that the defendant would marry you when, as, and if? Yes, sir. And now she refuses to make up her mind. Yes, sir. Tra la, I never gave my word. Tra la la la, permit a change of mind. When a maid gives her heart, but does not give her word, how on earth can that maid have betrayed him? Ha <laughs> ha. Elliot, you've heard the charges against you. Have you made up your mind about any of these things? No, I haven't. Do you intend to? I don't know. Can you give this court a reasonable explanation for not making up your mind? Yes, I can. There once was a girl named Jenny whose virtues were varied and many accepting that she was inclined always to make up her mind. And Jenny points a moral with which you cannot quarrel, as you will find. Who's Jenny? Never heard of Jenny. Jenny is out of place. But I'm sure the court will find Jenny is immortal and has a bearing on this case. As for instance, well, for instance... Ooh. Jenny made her mind up when she was three that she herself was going to trim the Christmas tree. Christmas Eve, she lit the candles, tossed the tapers away. Little Jenny was an orphan on Christmas Day. Oh, Jenny, right as a penny, a reaper would be hard to find. She lost one dad and mother, a sister and a brother, but she would make up her mind. Little Jenny was an orphan on Christmas Day. Jenny made her mind up when she was 12 that into foreign languages she would delve. But at 17 to Vassar it was quite a blow that in 27 languages she couldn't say no. Oh, Jenny, right as a penny, would be hard to, to Jenny, I'm beholden. Her heart was big and golden, but she would make up her mind. She couldn't make up her mind. Dig that. In 27 languages. Jenny made her mind up at 22. To get herself a husband was the thing to do. She got herself all dolled up in her satins and furs. And she got herself a husband, but he wasn't hers. Poor Jenny, bright as a penny, her equal would be hard to find. Could have had a bed of roses, but history discloses that she would make up her mind. She got herself a husband, but he wasn't hers. He wasn't hers. 
Jenny made her mind up at 51. She would write her memoirs before she was done. So she wrote them and she published all her loves and her hates and had libel suits in 40 of the 48 states. Her equal would be hard to find. She could give cards and spades to many other ladies, but she would make up her mind. There were wives who shot their husbands in 33 states. Jenny made her mind up at 75 that she would live to be the oldest woman alive. But Jen and Rob and Destiny can play funny tricks, and poor Jenny kicked the bucket at 76. Jenny for tomorrow, with which we can quarrel, makes a lot of common sense. Jenny and a saga, prove that you are gaga if, if you, you don't, don't keep sitting on, on the fence. Jenny and her story point the way to glory to all men and womankind. Anyone with vision comes to this decision. Don't, Don't make, make up, you shouldn't make up, you mustn't make, make up, up, you mustn't make up, or never make up. Anyone with vision comes to this decision. Don't make up! No, don't sing that. Don't. Don't play that. Father. Father, make them stop. Father, make them stop it. Don't let them play that. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not your father. Don't say that. Father. Dad. Dad, help me. Liza, how dare you put on that dress? Take it off. Take it off at once. I call it a dream, but well, it wasn't really. It was a kind of hallucination. I can't seem to shake it off. That's why I came back. I had to. When my father spoke to me like that, I... I had the feeling of its having happened before. When they started humming that song, I had the same feeling of hurt and humiliation I used to have. When? I used to have it quite often as a little girl. I never thought about that until just this minute. I must have forgotten it. Deliberately forgotten it. But it's the same. That bad feeling, I used to call it. Can you possibly remember when you first had this feeling? Yes. I must have been very little, about four or five years old. It was one evening when I was ready for bed. Father and mother were going out. My father came into the room. Oh, I was crazy about my father. Thought he was the most wonderful man in the whole world. King Arthur and Galahad and all the other heroes rolled into one. Then I remember my mother calling. Bob! Bob! Sorry, dear, I have to go. But, Daddy, the surprise! Well, how do I look? Oh, Mommy, Mommy! Oh, careful, Liza. You might crush Mommy's dress. Well, come on. They're waiting. Oh, no, 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 dear, no. Wait here. I'll call you. I adored my mother, too. I loved just to watch her. She was so beautiful. That's why she was always surrounded by men. I remember father joking them. They'd all been in love with her and wanted to marry her, too. I remember that this was to be a particularly exciting night for me. I was to be allowed to come downstairs. Father and I had a surprise for mother. And when he called me... Liza, come on, dear. Come on. Come on. 
Here she is to sing her little song for you. Well, that's not your child. That's what they tell me. She doesn't look anything like you. Bob, for that matter. Maybe they switched babies on you in the hospital. Oh. <laughs> I always told you you should have married me. Oh. Now, 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 I'm perfectly contented. One beauty in the family is enough for me. People don't seem to realize the children hear and understand. I wanted to shout and make them stop. I wanted to cry out, it's not true, it's not true. I'm like my mother. Come on, everybody. We've got to go. Betty will be simply furious with me for keeping all you men from her party. Oh, now, wait a minute. She's going to sing her song. Well, all right, but hurry up. Come on now, darling. Sing it for Mommy. Come on now. My ship has... Come on now, darling. Oh, now. Now, remember, you were going to surprise Mommy. Come on now. My ship has... My ship has sails that are made of silk. The decks are trim with... Liza, Liza, what's the matter, dear? I ran into my room. I wanted to get away from them, away from their laughter. I looked at myself in the mirror. Suddenly, I felt ugly and ashamed. It wasn't long after that that my mother died. I remember going to the cemetery. I knew I'd never see my mother ever again. I wanted to cry, but I couldn't. I loved her, but I could feel no grief. The tears wouldn't come. I used to watch my father after that. He'd sit all by himself for hours, and not say a thing. The only way I knew how to take my mother's place was to try to look like her. I stole into her closet and got out her blue evening gown, the one he loved the best. At last, I thought I was going to be able to do something to please him. Liza, what are you doing? How dare you put on that dress? Take it off. Take it off at once. Don't ever do that again. Go back to your room. I had a terrible convulsive shock. My father, whom I loved completely and worshipped, had suddenly turned on me. I felt he hated me. From that time on, I, I never tried to come close to him again. I buried myself in my schoolwork. I made up my mind. If I couldn't be anything else, I was going to be tops in my class. I never went to parties or dances, except one. It was graduation day. I remember I'd gone into the library to get a book. It was deserted that night, except for one person. It was Ben. Ben, who'd been chosen the handsomest boy in the class. Hello, Liza. Hello, Ben. Why aren't you at the dance? What about you? I had a headache. Want to go to the dance with me? Shh. Where's Barbara? Well, we're not speaking anymore. She's not speaking to me, and I'm not speaking to her. What did you quarrel about? Oh, I don't know. I hate a girl who flirts all the time. Honest, do you think a girl should flirt all the time? Well, I imagine it's pretty difficult for Barbara not to. She's so beautiful. Yeah. Too beautiful, if you ask me. Heck, I'm going to college next fall. I don't want a girl who... who... Why do we keep on talking about her? You're much nicer. Look, what do you say we drop in there? Just for sort of a last dance with the kids, huh? Well, I'll have to go home first and tell my dad. Holy cow, let's get that one. Please. I'm sorry, Mr. Black. I'll take this one. I didn't really have to let anyone know. I just wanted to go home and put on my party dress. Then 
on the way to the dance. Say, you know you're pretty? What's the matter? Don't you like me? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. I always have. It's, it's just that I never thought you ever noticed me before. Well, say, can't a fella suddenly like a girl? Suddenly? I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. For the first time, I was really happy. I felt for once that I was as pretty as other girls. See, but you're a nice lass. So well. Thank you. Ben. Hello, Barbara. Oh, hello. Ben, could I talk to you for a minute? What for? Why, I, I just want to talk to you, silly. I didn't know you were speaking to me. I'm not. I think you're the rudest boy I've ever known. Let me fit the pieces together. A little girl, convinced of her own ugliness, rejects herself as not as good as other little girls. You build a wall around yourself after that. You determine that you'd never put yourself in a position to be hurt again. Until that one time with Ben in high school. You dropped your defenses. And in that crucial moment, you received another blow, a cruel blow, Barbara. I think it was then that you withdrew as a woman. Would never again risk being hurt as a woman competing with other women. You buried your emotions and all your painful memories. And with them, the little song which expresses the fulfillment of love. And proceeded to escape into a loveless world of work. Oh, it wasn't loveless. I loved Kendall. No, Miss Elliot, you didn't. In rejecting Mr. Nesbitt, you proved that. You dominated him as you attempted to dominate all men, to force all men to accept you as superior to them. Well, what's the answer? Perhaps some man who will dominate you. That's silly, isn't it? That a grown woman should be governed by the desperate desires of her childhood. On you, trailing you. Where are you going? Back to the office. Okay, get in. <laughs> it's only a couple of blocks. Come on, get in. I gotta work fast. I've decided I'm not gonna give you any more time to think. If you haven't made up your mind yet, I'm gonna make it up for you. What are you smiling at? Oh, something that the doctor said. Go on. Liza. Oh, Mr. Curtis. Gee, give me your autograph, will you? I ain't got you. I got Ronnie Coleman and Dottie Lamore. And I got Bing Crosby. He was hard to get, but I got him. And... Oh! 
Mr. Curtis! How long have I been here? Six years? It's a long time to work in a world of women. Not bad, though. Charlie, what makes you such a heel? If you don't tell her you're sorry for what you said yesterday, I'll never speak to you again. Okay. Okay what? Okay, I'll apologize. I know now I was wrong. Well, what's hit you? Never heard you admit you were wrong before. Well, I guess chipping wasn't the best method after all. I saw her last night. I got to look at her without that brick front. Underneath Maggie, she's quite a gal. You kind of surprise me, baby. Oh, no, I don't. You've suspected it for a long time. You old battle axe. You want a gooey kiss, huh? Oh, Charlie, stop it. Can't you be serious for more than a moment? No, oh, everybody likes me better when I'm cute. You know something? I'm kind of sick of being cute, even to myself. Yes, here's a secret. Inside, I'm as romantic as the devil. An outsider. Hey, lay off me, will you? You're a hard woman, Mag. You said it. Now, you keep your word. You promise me. Okay. An apology and no jokes. I promise. Charlie, you know something? You're really not a bad guy. Well, well, well. Mr. Curtis. Yes. Oh, by the way, Mr. Curtis, Hollywood's been paging you again. Billy will show you where you can take it. Thank you. I won't be long. About this place, sir. What is this all about? Maggie, Randy has asked me to marry him. Don't tell me boy meets girl. Maggie, I'm learning about someone I don't think I ever really knew before. Myself. It's frightening and wonderful. Liza, what about all this? The magazine, everything. It's over. I'm giving it up. Everything. I'm going to live my life as a woman. I'm through with hiding and running away. Running away? Yeah, there are various ways of running away, Maggie. Only now I know the reason. I want and need someone to lean on to take care of me. I want to live as other women do. Oh, be happy for me, Maggie. I think I've found the answer. Oh, Liza, dear, I am. It's what I've always hoped for you. Oh, thank you, Maggie. Well, while you're still here, there are things to okay. Well, all right, bring them in. Good morning, Miss Walter. I want a big picture of Freud right in my office. Kendall. all over, Liza, isn't it? Nothing either one of us can do about that. Oh, I guess I've, I guess I've known it for a long while. But somehow, somewhere, you find a place for me in your life, will you, Liza? Kendall. You'll always be very, very dear to me. Whoops! Sorry. Oh, no. Stay where you are, Maggie. For heaven's sake, stop looking as though you'd blundered into a true confessions magazine. Goodbye, dear. Liza. It's all right, Mag. Just that part of my life walked out of that door just now. Part of me. Poor Kendall, he's like a lost child. Oh, Miss Elliot, Mr. Curtis is here, and Miss Grant, Allison, and Russell are having a row, and you can hear them all over the place. Those two. Oh, congratulations, Randy. Suppose I might as well start calling you Randy. Oh, well, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can come in, Mr. Curtis. Thank you. Liza, I've got great news. What is it? I just talked to the coast long distance. They want me to form my own producing unit, set up a whole separate corporation. I'd be in complete control. Stories, production, profits, everything. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Randy. I don't know anything about it, but it sounds <laughs> Sure, it's what my agent's been battling for for more than a year. But this is what I mean, Liza. If I knew you'd be in back of me, that, that well, that, that you'd be in charge of the whole thing, just the way you're in charge here, I'd say yes in a minute. 
Gee, this way, it, it makes me the main guy of the whole thing, and it, it scares me. Would you do it, Liza? Oh, you're going to be in charge of me anyway. You might as well run the whole thing. I haven't been able to put it into words, but I need someone like you, Liza. I guess the truth is I'm a pretty frightened guy inside. But I just had to talk to somebody, and, and you're the one I'll be running to for the rest of my life. You might as well get used to it. Oh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, don't worry. You're still going to be the boss. Wonderful. One kiss and I'll get out. Thanks, Randy, for telling me. 7.30 and I promise not to come back before that, even if they ask me to run for president. I demand a showdown, an immediate and utter showdown. Well, I can't talk to you now. Do you know what that Allison woman did? She deliberately and quietly and calmly took my color plate Russell, and... Russell, not now. Not now, not now! What am I supposed to do to get some attention around here? Bleed in front of you? Paxton, the dog department wants to see you. How oh, darling of them. I might stay there the rest of my life. If you have any luck with a sleeping beauty, let me know. Really, I could spit! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm supposed to apologize to you for what I said the other day. I promised Maggie I would. Come on, Johnson. Put him up. It's the kid's last fight. Well, I've been thinking it over quietly, and I've decided I'm not going to. I'm sorry I can't help it. But you've always had to be the boss, and something inside me deeply resents that. I know I've been pretty rotten to you, and I've kicked myself for it afterwards. But there's always been that secret battle between us from the very beginning, and I've always had to win because well, because I'm me, I guess. Anyway, I want you to know, now that I'm leaving, that with all your shenanigans, I think you're fine. Oh, I turned in the Hattie Carnegie layout to Paxton, so I guess that washes me up. Johnson. Or Charlie, if I may. Give me back that paperweight and stay, will you? Look. I know all your reasons for wanting to leave, but it seems as though I'm getting a divorce from myself. And I think you ought to stick around and see the fun. What do you say? Sorry it wouldn't work. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, why don't we run the magazine together? After a while, I might even step aside. That is, if you don't get too drunk with power. You mean that? Yes. And give me back that paperweight, just as a token that you intend to stay. Because I want you to stay very much. Yeah, catch. Thanks. Now, the first thing I want to do is change the format. I've been sick of it for years. You gonna lay out here? Yeah, I've got the Easter issue. Let me show you what I mean. Now, instead of having the name on top, yeah. why not put it over here? Yeah, and change the size, too. Huh? Sure, while you're at it, change the type. You mentioned that yourself months ago. Oh, well, Maggie, be an angel and call the Waldorf and tell Randy Curtis I won't be able to see him tonight, but I'll talk to him sometime tomorrow. Oh, but, look. Charlie, look, we can't get this ready for the Easter issue. I sure we, no, we can't. can't. Look, I gotta lay it on my desk. Let me get it. I'll be back in a minute. All right. Be nice to me, wonderful. I'm your boss now. Do you mind telling me, Miss Elliot, exactly what the devil goes on around here? Maggie, I almost made a great mistake. I almost twisted up my whole life all over again. I might have married Randy Curtis. I thought he was a refuge, a, a tower of strength. Well, you know the parts he plays and the way he looks. But do you know what, Maggie? He's frightened and insecure. He needs what Kendall needed, a mother, not a wife. But Liza... Maggie, I don't think you're ever going to have to worry about Liza anymore. I think I'm going to be all right. Well, I'll be... Look. I made up this dummy a couple of weeks ago just for fun. See what does the whole magazine? Yeah, yeah. Look, let me show you something. What are you doing down there? Well, just having a few laughs. 
Look, put the ads back here, see? Yeah. And the color section up in front. What about that? Sure, it's dangerous, but if you can pull it off, it can be... It can be great. Oh. Well, go on. What did you say? I said, uh, go on and, and do what you're going to do. Uh, this is the end, the absolute end. Mm -hmm.